Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Grade 1 Theory. This afternoon, we are going to be doing Beaming. Beaming is the eighth module on the www.mymusictheory.com site. I'm not affiliated to the site, but if you want to check out the ABRSM syllabus, which I refer to on that site, you can go and look at the modules there in their written um, teaching form with um, some Module 8 Beaming exercises. But today, I'm just going to give you a quick verbal explanation of beaming um, as quickly as I can and just give you the concept of beaming. You need to flesh it out for yourself by looking at a few other articles. Um, it can get quite complicated. Okay, beaming. The first thing you need to know in beaming is that there are three time signatures in grade one and these are two four, three four and four four. Right, so the reason I'm taking you back to time signatures is because this has to do with what they call grouping. And grouping has to do with the beats in each bar, and the time signature signifies how many beats there are in each bar. 2, 4, remember, how many of what? Tom, top number how many, bottom number of what? 2, 4, 2 crotchets, 3 crotchets, 4 crotchets. Of what? The bottom number symbolizes a note, and in grade 1, the 4 symbolizes a crotchet. Right, so 2-4, if you visualize it, I like to visualize time signatures. If you're struggling with a time signature, write it down in its most basic form. That's what 2-4 would look like. Two crotchet beats. In grade one, they like you to understand that a crotchet is the beat. Okay, 3-4, that's what it would look like. And that's beautiful for the musician to read because he can simply see where each beat falls. 3-4. And over here in 4-4, four, four, you're going to get four notes that look like that. And they symbolize four beats in that bar. One, two, three, four, ba, 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 and so on. Okay, so this is what you have to understand is that what uh, theory teaches you is to write the music neatly and succinctly in its beats so that the musician who plays it um, can clearly see where those beats fall. Okay, which notes get beamed? A semi-brief or whole note does not get beamed. A minim or half note does not get a beam. And a crotchet or quarter note does not get a beam. The beaming only applies in grade one to the quaver and the semi-quaver. The quaver is the one with the stem and one flag. The semi-quaver is the stem and two flags. Okay, it only applies to these notes. So how does it apply? Sometimes when we break down a crotchet into two half beats, these would be the two half beats associated with the crotchet. Those are two quavers. To make them look neater, you can beam between these two quavers. All right. So that is what the beam looks like. And if there are a quaver with one flag at the bottom, they get a beaming line. They get one beaming line. Okay. Right. Let's take a quaver and break that down in half. And that would equate to two semi-quavers. Right. And if you take the two semi-quavers and you beam them, because they've got two little flags, we need two lines for the beaming. So that's what the beaming looks like. Okay, how does the beaming rule work? Basically, and this is very basic, I'm not going to go too deeply into this. If you had 2-4, they may give you a question that looks something uh, like this. And they will separate all the little notes that go into each of the crotchets. Remember, you're looking for crotchets. You're looking for beats when you're beaming. And they give you something that looks like this. That's a 2-4 time signature. It means there are two crotchets in the bar. But look at that. It's, it's very dense. Graphically, it's very dense. It's very complex. And it's hard for your eye to understand where the two beats are. Remember, you're looking for two crotchets because it's 2-4. So what they want you to do is look for those crotchets and beam these notes together so that the crotchets become very clear to the player. Okay, right. So here we have a semi-quaver and a semi-quaver, which make up a quaver, and a semi-quaver and a semi-quaver, which make up a quaver, and two quavers, which make up a crotchet. So we've already found one of the crotchets there. A 
Quaver and a quaver make up a crotchet. So this is definitely a crotchet, this configuration of notes. So here we can introduce our beaming rule. They're all semi-quavers, so we draw two lines. That's your first crotchet. Coming to this one here, we know that these two quavers make up a crotchet, and here again we can beam these two notes together to make it nice and neat. Now look how your eye sees the two crotchet beats. That is a crotchet beat and that is a crotchet beat. So what beaming does is it makes it easier for the musician to see where the beats in the bar fall. Let's try one more example. So this is a bit more complex. Um, You see how complex this looks and how difficult it is to draw this out. Oops, it's now 4-4. Four, four. Look how complex that looks. I'm hoping you can see all of that. So what we're looking for in, a, in essence is this time signature. We're looking for four crotchets. That's the simplest graphic, graphic representation of 4-4. Four, four. We're looking for that. So where is our first crotchet? We have a, so I encourage you to do this. Take your pencil on your exam paper and lightly above this, just add up the note values. Two semi-quavers make a quaver. We have a quaver, ah, and this all equals a crotchet. So there's your first crotchet beat. So you can beam all of that together. So let me take my little flags out like this and beam it together. However, these two first notes are semi-quavers, and this last one's a crotchet. But there we go, nicely beamed, your first beat. Right, quaver plus a quaver make up a crotchet, so we know that's your second beat. But look at how the stems are going. So when you beam, you want to beam in the same direction. Um, I'm going to get back to the direction of the stems at another, another time. But basically, you can beam these two notes together like that. And then over here... Uh, sorry, it's getting a bit messy. Because these are semi-quavers, four semi-quavers make up a crotchet, and we can put a beam through there. And of course, we don't have to do anything to that last crotchet because it is already a standalone crotchet. So, beat one, beat two, beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four. So, I hope that helps you understand at least the concept of beaming. There is a rule that has to do with which way the um, stems of the notes must go up or down, and I will show you that in another video. But beaming, this is the concept of beaming, that basically you're beaming according to the, um, the key signature that you've been given in grade 1, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, and we are considering each crotchet as a beat, and we're beaming according to each of those beats. I've forgotten one thing. One last thing about beaming I have to show you. Please don't beam across the middle of a bar. So, in beaming, we like to keep this middle of the bar free. There's the middle of the bar in 4-4. Four, four. If this was in 4-4, four, four, one crotchet, two quavers, two quavers, the last crotchet. Don't beam across the middle of the bar. So, in theory, we don't like to do a beam across the middle of the bar like that. So please don't do that. And in 2-4, the same, you can also separate. If this was 2-4, you could also keep the middle of the bar clear. Right. Thank you very much.